That's right, it's his birthday! And you're wondering, well, where's the birthday boy? What do you think? He's outside playing with his friends. He could care less about me. I'm gonna go eat breakfast and we'll say hi to Jaw. Happy birthday, Joster! Oh, look at that. Quiche, some fruit, coffee, orange juice, granola bar, perfect. Gosh. This is what we're listening to right now. This is great. Classical music geared towards a dog's ear. Happy birthday! Hi, guys! <laughs> I think I made a friend for life with you, Liam. You could be Jaws' little brother. Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. I hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks for coming back and seeing us today on Jaws' fourth birthday. Today, we leave this awesome Airbnb and we go to Santa Barbara, so he's gonna have a blast. And we're gonna make a stop along the way. What I wanna stop and see is the San Juan Bautista mission. The movie Vertigo by Alfred Hitchcock starring Jimmy Stewart and Kim Novak had a pretty cool scene filmed there and there's also a really peculiar house right across the street that has a really interesting story that I wanna tell you about. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. I'm sure gonna miss having dogs running around everywhere for him to play with. He's been loving this. Happy birthday! Hi, Liam. Hi, Liam. You handsome devil, you. Hi, Charlie. Joster, can everybody see your face? That's a four-year-old face right there. I think Jaw's gonna miss the horses. He's loved coming over here, hanging out. Some of you that watched a live stream last night saw him try and sneak in through that gate while I was live streaming. That's because Liam does that. And whatever Liam does, now Jaw does. Don't you, Jaw? You found a friend that you can mimic. Hi. And what's going on with you two? You were just kicking the trough. Are you mad at me? Because I didn't say hi? Well, good morning, guys. Good morning. You two are so beautiful. It's been a real highlight to my day getting to come out every morning and see you guys out here so happy. Yeah. We'll have to bring Jaw back. See, he's down there trying to kiss the horse through the fence. I think it's pretty much a given we're gonna have to come back here and stay again. Jaw just loves it too much. There's Liam's little sister. Hi. She hasn't had her shots yet, so we have to be cool with her a little bit. Well, Jaw, we're out of here, buddy. Time for our next adventure. Well, they don't allow dogs inside, but luckily I think we can get all the footage we need without going inside. Unlike most missions, you can actually kind of see in from the outside. But what we need is actually on the other side of this property right here. Now this area is beautiful and it has an interesting history. A long history. Take a look at that, established 1856. Where we're gonna be heading to is right over here. There's the front, isn't that beautiful? The whole town's like this. And that house right there has a really crazy story I'm gonna tell you about in a little bit. Now there's the old stables, and I believe these are the stables that Kim Novak has her scene in with Jimmy Stewart in Vertigo. Now they come out of here, and they're actually crossing through here, and you kind of get a shot of this in the background as they're walking through here. And that tree over there, that's where we want to go now. So in Vertigo, the whole basic storyline is that there's a guy whose wife vanishes every day. He doesn't know what she does, but he thinks that basically her soul or her, her brain is being inhabited by someone else. So he hires a college friend of his, played by Jimmy Stewart, who's just retired from the police force because he has Vertigo. He can't go up any stairs or anything without having panic attacks, you know? and. So at first he says, I don't want to do this, you know, I don't, this isn't my line of work, but then the guy basically, you know, really appeals to him. 
and of course, as you can guess, not too long after Jimmy Stewart starts tailing her, he falls in love with her. And if you lose me, then you'll know I, I loved you and I wanted to go on loving you. They fall in love, and there's a scene where they're actually here, and they're in that stable over there. And then you see them walking through this courtyard here, and then you see Kim Novak run into that hole right there where that tree is now. Isn't that interesting? Now, you see her run in and she kind of enters where the gift shop is over here, but there's a little bit of mood, movie history here because this location had been scouted years before the movie was ever made. And Alfred Hitchcock knew exactly what he wanted Problem was there used to be a tower here, much like what you see in the movie. Except, the tower had dry rotted, and in those years since Alfred Hitchcock had been out here and seen it, he didn't know that the tower was gone. So they ended up having to recreate the tower in Hollywood for that whole um, climbing, the, uh, climbing up the stairs scene and everything. So the one that's on the grounds now is actually got a crazy story because the um, someone that lives nearby missed the idea of there being a tower here. So after the movie was made, he actually paid to have a new tower built. And so that's the one that you see here. Now it's not the, uh, doesn't even have the same look as as the, the one in the movie, because the one in the movie, of course, has the stairwell that he goes up and he starts looking down and... Father Frere Huna Percero, Sarah? Sorry about that pronunciation. But yeah, he, um... You know, she, she says right before she goes up there, she says, you know I love you, right? And he says, yes. And she says, you believe that, right? And he says, yeah. And she says, so you know if I fall, that it wasn't my fault. And then she takes off, like I said, running through here, goes inside, and that's where he sees her fall from the window. That's a beautiful mission, and part of the reason that it became, kind of even though I said I didn't want to do any kind of movie locations, the lady that I was staying with was telling me she's a, she's a big, big, um, I guess, donor here was telling me that this mission in particular is one of the oldest still in existence and that it's in badly need of repair. They need like $36 million to do repairs and they just don't have the money. And she said the people in this area just don't have the kind of money other places have to invest in that. So I said, you know what? I would love to go check that place out anyway because it was part of Vertigo. And like she said, she said, you know, Vertigo is like the, the film viewer's choice of like best movie of all time and I said yeah I had read that or, or I knew it had been picked as like best movie of all time by something so I said you know what I want to swing by and and see that and I'll also mention that it's in need of some repairs isn't that interesting and sorry about the the camera work being a little shaky it's because I have jaw I'm carrying jaw so but isn't that crazy that that scene would have taken place here in those stables right over there, they would walk through this yard. Now one of the cool stories is that the lady I stayed with also said, she said she's been coming here so long, she said the woman that works in the gift shop here now, her mother worked in the gift shop here then. And she said Jimmy Stewart came in and bought a rosary. And she said, yeah, he wasn't even Catholic, but he wanted to, he wanted to help support, so pretty cool. The Plaza Hall. Now I want to show you and tell you the story of this house over here. I love coming and checking out missions. I wish I would have had time to do the one in Carmel yesterday. And there's the stable. That was really funny. A kid just walked by me with his family. He must have been eight years old and he goes, that's a vlogging camera. <laughs> 
So this is what we came to see over here. The Castro Breen Adobe. Now this house was built by Jose Castro. This is a nutty story. You guys aren't gonna believe this. He built it in 1838, and in 1849, he sold it to a man named Patrick Breen. And here you can see it says the Patrick and Margaret Breen family estate for almost 100 years. Now here's the crazy story of Patrick Breen. And this is, I mean, this blew my mind. The lady I was staying with said, make sure you check out the Breen house across the street. And I said, never heard of it. And she said, oh my God, look up Patrick Breen. So here's the story. Patrick Breen was a member of the Donner Party. In the mid 1800s, the Donner Party was making their way west to California and they were taking a route that basically was not a common route that most people didn't take. So instead of it being a four month trip like it should have been, it started, they had all kinds of mishaps and they made mistakes all along the way, getting their wagons stuck and everything and it almost took two years. So at one point they got their main wagons and everything stuck and they um, started losing people. The group started fighting and splitting up along the way and everything. They started out, I think it is as 87 people that took off. So at some point they, um, they had to send out a group to get help. And the group took like four months to come back for help. And when they did, the Donner Party members um, had resorted to cannibalism their food stocks had went low and they started eating each other so of the 87 that departed only 43 made it to california and because of that whole story and and you know it was just such a like in everybody's mind it was unthinkable that it had happened everybody that was a part of it whether anybody understood what they were going through or not whether you know they were completely out of food and they had to or if the people were already dying or what it was the fact that they had done this they had been ostracized from a lot of communities and so this was one of the few places that the Breens could find a home in so that's why they lived here so long and then when they died the house was left to the state of California and they turned it into a historical monument isn't that nuts? The Donner Party. Holy Christmas, man. That was like 1847 they made it here. <laughs> so San Juan Bautista definitely has some stuff to see if you come here. It's not just a little blip on the map. Oh, this is interesting. Apparently people used to go in, go inside this tree, because it's closed now. And here's a historical marker. It says uh, it's associated with the early development and settlement of Mexican California. The adobe is an excellent example of eastern and western building methods first introduced in Monterey to form the Monterey colonial architectural style. Wow. And it looks like they've turned this plaza that we were looking in or looking at when we first got here. It's part of the historical state park. I just stopped in to buy you guys some postcards and take a look at that. Holy cow, man, that's what the plaza used to look like. We're inside here right now. This is the gift shop of it, but that is cool. That's I'll match that up outside when we leave here. And that's a pretty good matchup of what we just looked at, that picture. Great little town. I'm gonna go check this out. Looks like there's some sort of little log cabin over here. Oh, so check this out. It's saying that the original first settlement was right here, and then they put up a wooden Wells Fargo Express office, replaced it in 1856, and then there was a, uh, a Mission Hotel, it looks like, kind of right where we're located, right next to here. Let's go take a look at what this is. Now the sign says, Settler's Cabin, possibly the first log cabin in California, originally located one and a half miles southeast. The carpenter may have been an early settler. Whoa! Probably look better with my other low light camera, but we can still see. Wow. 
the very possibly the first log cabin. That's pretty cool. All right, birthday boy. Let's head off to Santa Barbara. I'm really glad we stopped in this little town. That was a lot of fun. Well, the only shot from the movie Vertigo that we didn't get inside there was when they go inside the actual chapel and she looks at the altar and then runs to the stairs, but that's not even open today, or not right now anyway, so I think we got as much as we could. Hope you guys enjoyed this little stop into San Juan Bautista. And before we left, I saw this lodge, this Texas lodge, and I just love the look of it so much I had to show it to you guys. That's easily, what, what do you think, late 1800s? says building was completed in 1869 I just saw. Wow. Interesting. the last rest stop for 120 miles so John needs it baby let's get out and stretch your legs it's a nice little rest stop he's making life a little difficult on himself because he has not eaten his breakfast yet and he won't eat and I put his two favorite things in there so there's no excuse what's the deal fella it's things like this sign you just can't make up pet area look out for rattlesnakes sign from the Madonna Inn. There's the Madonna Inn. I'm hoping to stay there pretty soon. Just couldn't do it this trip. Well, we made it to Santa Barbara. We're at Cece's house and look what she has in her living room. How great is that? The Elvis Andy Warhol. I love it. And a lion. And a little birthday boy. Go ahead. Oh, look who's getting a lot of love. Hi, Joster, it's the birthday boy. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just hanging out here relaxing for his birthday. We're all going to go out and uh, we're going to go get something to eat. We're also going to go find a special dog bakery and get Ja a little special birthday treat. Are you cool with going out for a special birthday treat, my friend? You think you could hand... I know, you look like you're about to fall asleep, but do you think you could handle going out for a doggy cupcake or a doggy cake birthday boy, huh? <laughs> okay, well we're going to try anyway. Happy birthday, Joster. Happy fourth birthday. She created a bamboo garden here, which I think is awesome. I'm loving her, her property here, her house. I just noticed this swing here. Did you guys see this? And she was telling me that a, uh, she went to like an estate sale in Montecito Heights and got all these cool things. I love that. I also love that. That's pretty cool. Well, here's where we're gonna eat. Anderson's. Yeah, that gets in the water at some point. <laughs> I saw those in Sweden. Oh, how great is this? They have a puppy menu here, so that was the... He, yeah, he, he knows. He's excited. We're looking forward to this one. I Probably chicken... Well, I don't know. We'll look. He has all kinds of options. So... This is great, Cece's friend Charlotte owns this restaurant and she just brought us out a little dessert and she brought us some uh, some toasting drinks and, uh, and Jaw some treats as well. So we're about to do a little toast. Charlotte, the owner. Hello. And here's Jaw's food. It's pretty hot, but look, he's freaking out. He, he can smell it. I can look at him go. <laughs> and then we got a crab cake appetizer. We got some street tacos and then we ordered uh, some entrees coming. Good stuff.
Wow, that's my chicken piccata. And, and CC salad. She got the beet salad. Nice. And you already ate. You, you devoured. You devoured the entire bowl. Good job. Well, I think that's gonna do it for us here in Santa Barbara. Tomorrow we're gonna go explore a few pretty cool sites. Jot had a great birthday, and we're having fun. I want to thank Karen and Michael Beach for becoming my newest Patreons. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night and goodbye. Always working for someone